So guess what was trending on Twitter today? That's right, cultural Marxism. And so obviously the usual left-wing verified check marks had to get out in force and say, hey, what? No, this this was invented by like Anders Breivik or someone. Don't be don't be silly, you don't need to look at this. This is nothing. This is just a conspiracy an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Sorry, no less. It's it's just a, it's nothing. It's nonsense. Only Nazis would ever say something like cultural Marxism. I mean, look, look, just just Mike Stuckbury here. He's got it. He's on it. Boom. He's he knows that this is the thing that they have to defend. Cultural Marxism is again a far right idea, dis- first described as cultural Bolshevismus by the Nazis. So cultural Bolshevism by the Nazis, then repackaged after World War II by successive waves of extremists. It's a fringe conspiracy theory. Now a conservative politician feels comfortable speaking about it in 2019. Well, I guess, Mike, it's because it's fucking everywhere. Except now it's known by the name intersectionality, and that's the name that we should use. And you say that this is a far-right idea. No, this is a far-left idea. And always has been. And it's weird how the adherents of the Frankfurt School were all far-left. I mean, it's strange that this just happens to have been, like a particular wing that would use this particular toolkit in order to advance an agenda. Now, um, objectivist philosopher Stephen Hicks thinks that the whole purpose of the, the, the critique of the Enlightenment that was happening at the Frankfurt School was in order to essentially save Marxism from its own internal flaws and contradictions. Because frankly, it had failed. It just hadn't succeeded in producing the socialist utopia that or well, communist utopia that the uh the 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 prophet marx had prophesied but um yeah so i mean like you know it's just like conservative brexit here pushes far right anti-semitic conspiracy theory i don't see what's anti-semitic about it i mean if you're if you're thinking if it's some sort of anti-semitic conspiracy theory why does wikipedia have a very well sourced article on it that's actually really good i mean what do you want me to say? Frankfurt theoreticians proposed that social theory was inadequate for explaining the turbulent political factionism and reactionary politics occurring in ostensibly liberal capitalist societies in the 20th century. Critical of capitalism and of Mar- Marxism and Leninism as philosophically inflexible systems of social organization, the school's critical theory research indicated alternative paths to realizing the social development of society and a nation. That's what they were doing. <clears throat> the whole thing, I mean, like. It was uh, Adorno and Horkheimer, two of the leaders, and you can see them listed at the side here, the leaders of the Frankfurt School that wrote Dialectic of the Enlightenment, which, to be honest with you, I haven't managed to read yet. I read uh, probably the first chapter or two a while ago and realised that I simply wasn't philosophically equipped to go through this, because what we're looking at here is some of the finest minds that have ever lived in all of human history coming together with the specific goal of critiquing the Enlightenment. These are the people who developed critical theory. And the whole purpose, in Stephen Hicks's view, was that they were very, very disappointed at the the frankly the failure of Marxism, the failure of communist ideology, and they were looking for a way to save it, and that meant undermining capitalism, undermining liberalism, and essentially that meant going back to the very roots of the Enlightenment and attacking them themselves, which is how we ended up getting to the point where now we've got like people like Falguni Sheth and various others who are like the the sort of postmodern critical theorists driving intersectionality by deconstructing what we consider to be reality itself and you know attacking the fact that all 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 understanding is based in language and so every everyone's understanding of a certain sentence is subjective because our interpretation of language isn't objective and then go right down to the fact that our senses aren't objective and so everyone's interpretation of the world is a subjective interpretation therefore we'd have no possible uh, way of achieving objectivity and therefore and that's where we leave and therefore, what what next? Because as soon as you say, well, subjectivity is essentially just as valid as objectivity because we are inherently subjective creatures and we aren't actually capable of true objectivity, we are necessarily subjective. So whatever we do comes from a subjective position and therefore anything we do, if we want to consider it valid, must be considered subjectively valid. Then we find ourselves in a kind of quagmire where, I mean, and let, let me ask, I don't fully understand any of this stuff, right? This is unbelievably complex. But again, I mean, I'm just saying, I guess the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, a peer-reviewed academic resource, is a conspiracy theory website, a far-right conspiracy theory website. And the thing is, right, 
Let's have, let's have a look at the notable theorists. Herbert Marcuse, Theodore Adorno, Max Horkheimer, Walter Benjamin, Erich er, er, Fromm, Frederick Pollock. Yeah, the, these are all Jews. It doesn't matter that they're all Jews, but they are. It's probably something to do with the fact that Jewish people tend to have very high IQs, isn't it? I imagine you've got to be pretty damn smart to really understand all of this stuff and to conceive of it in and of itself in the first place. So the fact that they're Jewish is being used as a smokescreen for the fact that their ideas are specifically a critique and deconstruction of the sort of epistemology of the Enlightenment. And it's not to say that the things they're saying aren't even valid, because I think they probably are, but it leaves us in a position where we essentially have nothing. And this is what Herbert Marcuse said, because he was a student of uh, a Nazi philosopher. I can't remember his name, but he's a member of the Nazi party. God damn, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. And he was uh, he was his, his his second in in whatever university it was, and he was he was forced to flee. They initially they fled to Geneva, and then they had to flee to uh, the to New York, as uh, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy tell us. They uh, they when uh, Hitler was named Chancellor in thirty three, the Institute of Frankfurt was closed, and this building was seized by the Gestapo. Horkheimer had to flee to Geneva and then to uh, New York. You know, none of this is not a conspiracy theory. This is what happened, at least according to Stanford and MIT or what you know, wherever, wherever these um these uh, these internet resources are being hosted. The relevant universities believe that these things happen. These are not conspiracy theories. The thing is, it for leftists who want to pr propagate these ideas because they personally will benefit from them. Well, of course they're going to say that, how dare you, how dare you, this is all a wild conspiracy theory. Of course they're going to say that. But none of this is conspiratorial. It's all out in the open. There's, it's a long academic history of this happening. Oh, sorry, Karl Marx. There's a long academic history of this happening. It's, it's very well laid out. You know, it's not... It's, it's, it's all there. It's, it, it's not in any way obscured. It unless it is only obscured by the inherent complexity of the subject and the kind of indirect influence that these people have had. It's, again, none of this is a secret. It's all on Wikipedia. It's all on these internet encyclopedias run by universities. None of this is a conspiracy theory. It's just the name cultural Marxism, I suppose, is similar to the name, the term the Nazis gave to it when they were persecuting it. So just come on, just stop this nonsense. And also, don't use the term cultural Marxism because it gives them, it's, it's like a trigger word for them. It gets them flipping out. I mean, and I, just to just say, look, this does entirely connect with, say, uh, critical theory and intersectionality. Foucault and Derrida are both well aware of the Frankfurt School. In fact, Foucault was, um, was actually kind of dismissive of the Frankfurt School until later on in his life when he said, the, uh, later on he said, I recognise all the merits of the Frankfurt School. I do so with the bad conscience of one who should have known them and studied them, that, uh, the, uh, them much earlier than was the case. Perhaps if I'd read these works earlier on, I, I would have saved useful time. Surely, I wouldn't have needed to write some things and I would have avoided certain errors. At any rate, if I'd encountered the Frankfurt School while young, I would have been seduced to the point of doing nothing else in life but the job of commenting on them. Instead, their influence on me remains retrospective, a contribution reached when I was no longer at the age of intellectual discoveries. I don't even know whether to feel glad or feel sorry about it. Foucault and Derrida and a bunch of others in the same sort of French vein of critical theorists, while in Foucault's case obviously not directly influenced by the Frankfurt School, were operating along the same lines. And then you end up with the sort of Judith Butlers, who, again, the, the sort of fully postmodern critical theory sort of school of uh, of modern philosophy. And then that in itself is the roots of intersectionality. And then you come to Francesca Ramsey spouting on about how you can't be racist to white people. That's that's the intellectual trajectory of these ideas and, and this kind of intellectual movement. So these spurgs on Twitter who don't know what they're talking about, but want to say, oh, it's, it's just all a Nazi conspiracy theory. No, it's actually one of the most salient and important intellectual 
developments of the 20th century and now in the 21st century we're seeing its effect on culture it had a very long trajectory over you know 100 years to get to the point where we are now but these ideas started in the frankfurt school and now we have the consequences of them that we are currently trying to get to grips with today because at the end of the day it's it's entirely deconstructionist and like stephen hicks thinks it, he thinks this is a way of effectively rescuing marxism from its own failures so don't give me this crap about it being a conspiracy theory it's not it's just something you don't like to talk about because it kind of was a deliberate attempt to effectively deconstruct the enlightenment itself